Hello and welcome to the NPTEL MOOCs course on Economics of Health and Education. In uh, module uh, 8 of this course, in uh, lesson 1 and week 10 of this course, we will uh, discuss about some health databases. In this module, we will discuss about uh, some widely used uh, education and health databases, particularly in the context of India. You will recall learners that in one of the earlier classes, we discussed about global disease burdens and we discussed about the importance and significance of global disease burdens in providing us different kinds of country profiles. In uh, the class on global disease burdens, I had taken reference to uh, what are the sources of data uh, for the study on global disease burdens. And we discussed that uh, there are certain national uh, level data sets, there are certain national level surveys that are carried out, which becomes important sources of information for the global studies on uh, disease burden, for example. So, in today's class, uh, we will focus on health and we will focus on uh, the morbidity and mortality surveys that are carried out in India. I will discuss three important uh, uh, surveys, the National Sample Survey Organization that is one of the uh, important data sources on morbidity and mortality in India. I will also discuss about the NFHS or the National Family Health Survey which also provides us information on morbidity and mortality. And then finally, we will uh, contrast uh, it with another uh, significant study which provides us some morbidity information which is called the IHDS survey or the India Human Development Survey. Now, one of the reasons why we are discussing about databases in today's class is often uh, when researchers uh, want to use, make use of uh, uh, data uh, in India we encounter various kinds of problems. Often there is a problem of data not being available in the public forum, uh, but uh, these are three important data sets which are easily available. You do not need permissions to work on this data and uh, the NFHS and NSS are official data sets which are uh, churned out by uh, the uh, ministries of uh, uh, family and Health Welfare and the Ministry of Statistics we will discuss presently in this class. And the IHTS is a non-official uh, data source, but a highly used one and a respectable data source uh, which has been used widely for not just uh, education and health, but various other aspects of human development as well. So, this uh, class is to introduce the learners to some of these data sources, uh, but of course, the onus is on the learners to uh, get into more details of these databases by visiting the websites, looking at the information closely, reading the reports and then trying some hands on experience on these data sets and ensuring how to use it for the context of your uh, research. Now, let me begin by uh, discussing what is the importance of health and morbidity surveys at the national level. We have studied about the uh, country profiles that uh, we come across in the case of global disease burden studies and we have seen how these kinds of country profiles on diseases can help us with regard to public policy making. So, within the broader context of uh, the importance of these uh, uh, national surveys, the health and morbidity surveys, let us understand a few key points. So, uh, age at death and cause uh, when we are looking at uh, mortality, we do understand that mortality figures are very important. The uh, cessation of life or death figures give us uh, an idea about whether uh, the number of deaths that we are experiencing in a country is a natural process of replacement or is it happening because of certain uh, causes, uh, health causes or certain environmental causes within the economy. So, age at death and cause basically provides an instant depiction of health status of a country and in high mortality settings, information on trends of death by causes uh, substantiate the progress of various health programs within the country. It gives us a sense of how far we have progressed with regard to various health interventions. Now, over time we have seen that in almost all countries of the world survival rates have improved. Now, as survival improves with modernization and population 
uh, and as population age, mortality measures often do not give us an adequate picture of a population's health status and it is then that we focus on uh, indicators of morbidity such as the prevalence of different kinds of diseases, whether those diseases have been prevalent for a longer duration of time or uh, there are various kinds of disabilities, which are those different kinds of disabilities, are they impacting people in the short run or in the long run, these kinds of assessments become very important. So, morbidity refers to diseases and illnesses, injuries and disabilities in a population. So, apart from uh, mortality, morbidity also gives us uh, an overall health status of the population. Now, the data on frequency and distribution of illness can also help us in controlling the spread of diseases and various illnesses and it may also lead to various kinds of identification of the causes of these illnesses which will also help us in um, overall uh, economic policy making. So, uh, the data on morbidity helps us to correlate various health indicators with various socioeconomic variables and ultimately they have a significant impact on the health status of an individual. And of course, as I said, these findings with regard to uh, illnesses and their correlations with various socioeconomic health indicators will eventually help us in making various interventions at the policy level. Now, let us begin with uh, India's uh, NSSO morbidity surveys. Uh, presently, the NSSO has uh, been renamed as the National Statistical Office. Uh, in this lecture, I will be using National Statistical Office and National Sample Survey Organization almost synonymously. But for the learners, it is important to note that presently, the government agency that conducts surveys on uh, various socioeconomic aspects of uh, health and consumption expenditure is referred to as the National Statistical Office, but it was earlier referred to as the National Sample Survey Organization. So, the NSO or the NSSO carries out morbidity surveys in India and these are uh, the NSO has been carrying out regular morbidity surveys. Uh, now, uh, generally morbidity refers to a feeling of sickness that hampers work productivity and morbid conditions can lead to diseases and affect overall well-being of the individuals. So, uh, keeping this in mind, countries have focused on assessing the status of morbidity among its population to take stock of general levels of well-being. And India also holds regular morbidity and mortality uh, surveys and NSSO is at the forefront of collecting some of these uh, statistics. Let us see how morbidity surveys have evolved in India because that will give us a sense of comparability, what data is available, for how long it is available and for researchers in health, for how long data is available can help us decide about uh, what is the duration for which we want to uh, conduct our study or use the uh, data that can help us in um, providing an explanation about the uh, research at hand. So, broadly the history of morbidity surveys in India is uh, actually intertwined with the broader development of India's statistical infrastructure and public health priorities. Uh, NSSO began in 1950, it was established under the Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation and the primary objective was to conduct large scale surveys across the country on various socioeconomic subjects, morbidity being just one among them. And uh, the main role was to provide reliable, periodic and comprehensive data for informed decision making in governance and policy formulation. There is ample literature on the NSSO, the beginnings of NSSO, the uh, evolution of uh, sampling methodologies in the NSSO on the ministry website. An interested learner is requested to visit the Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation and look up the National Statistical Office publications tab to uh, download the reports which will help you to understand the changing methodologies of NSSO with regard to its various surveys, not just on the morbidity survey. So, the first morbidity survey by NSSO was carried out in 1955-56. It was referred to as the seventh round of the NSS and this was one of the earliest attempts to systematically collect data on health status of the Indian population and the focus was on prevalence of various kinds of diseases and utilization of healthcare services. Remember that when we studied about global uh, disease burden study, we did make a reference to prevalence of diseases or the number of cases, new cases that are emerging on different diseases. So, one of the important focus areas of the NSSO surveys has been to count the prevalence of diseases in uh, various regions of the country. 
And since this is an extensive survey, it provides us an overall uh, idea about the prevalence of various diseases in India. Utilization of healthcare services basically refers to whether or not people are uh, going to government health services or government hospitals or private hospitals and what is the rate of utilization of these services. It also gives us a sense about the health seeking behavior of individuals within the Indian setup. Now, you would see this reference to seventh round of NSSO for someone who is not introduced to the NSSO. Uh, the NSSO surveys are carried out in various rounds, there are thick rounds and there are thin rounds. Thick rounds are basically large sample rounds which means that the number of households that are surveyed in the thick rounds are large. Thin rounds are small sample rounds. There are also differences in the reference period that is uh, uh, taken up for the thick round and the thin rounds. Uh, so, we can for the time being ignore uh, these uh, bit of information about the details of the methodologies that are carried out in different rounds, but it will suffice to understand that NSSO carries out different rounds and different rounds focus on different different aspects of uh, the Indian economy. So, the first morbidity survey was conducted in the seventh round of NSS which was in the early 1950s, the mid 1950s. Now, the seventh round uh, covered a wide range of socioeconomic indicators with morbidity data being one of the most critical components. And uh, as I said that this survey provided insights into prevalence of diseases and health seeking behavior of population. But there were various changes that were made to the morbidity round methodologies uh, during this period of the 50s and the 60s because of which often when we carry out data analysis using these data sets, uh, we do not uh, compare the seventh round data set with the recent data sets. So, there are many definitional changes, there are many methodological changes that have happened over a course of time that has made the earlier morbidity surveys incomparable with the more recent NSSO uh, morbidity surveys that have been carried out in the 1990s or the 2000s. However, it is important for us to know that these surveys exist and somebody who wants to do a study on let us say disease burdens in India or disease specific prevalence of diseases in different states of India, it will be interesting to look up these reports and take stock of where we were when we began in the 1950s and how far we have progressed now. Now, in the 1970s and 80s, there was a growth of uh, these uh, data sets. Uh, the uh, 28th round of NSSO 1973-74 included a more detailed morbidity survey where the focus was extensively on health issues uh, including morbidity and utilization of healthcare services. And in this period, uh, there were also new questions related to hospitalization and the financial burden of healthcare on households. So, it was from the 1970s and 80s onwards that we started talking about out of pocket expenditure uh, by households on healthcare or education and the research on these areas started uh, taking pace because of the data that was emanating from the ground on uh, these uh, aspects of uh, health and education. Uh, so, this was a period, the 1970s was a period where a lot of methodological improvements took place within the uh, data collection uh, practices and it improved the accuracy and depth of morbidity data. So, we do have information on hospitalization and financial burden of healthcare on households and these are the data that gave us the impression that probably at the household level both in rural areas and urban areas, the financial burden of healthcare on households is far too high for countries such as India. In the 1990s, uh, there were two key rounds, the 42nd round 86-87 uh, and the 52nd round of 1995-96. The 42nd round was uh, particularly notable as it included a detailed survey on morbidity, mortality and utilization providing a comprehensive view of health conditions across the country and also these surveys made sure to increase the sample sizes over a period of time. Uh, so, we had more representative data available uh, during uh, these periods. Uh, the 95-96 uh, uh, NSSO survey uh, also provided us more detailed morbidity data that helped to shape health policies uh, during a period of economic liberalizations when there were growing concerns about public health concerns. And remember that it was during this period that there were a lot of uh, uh, policy focus uh, from the World Bank on what kind of health services should be available uh, to the Indian population. 
and this was also the period when discussions around a national rural health mission uh, began in India and the focus started being on reproductive and child health services, maternal mortality rates were very high, uh, infant mortality rates were very high. So this was a period of rigorous policy making and decisions regarding policy attention and therefore these rounds bear a lot of importance with regard to uh, what was the uh, policy uh, landscape of India in the 1990s. In the 2000s, there were uh, two important rounds, the 60th round, it was a landmark in morbidity service because here the focus started being on the uh, burden of non-communicable diseases. So far in India, we saw that the burden of infectious diseases was far too large. But during the 2000s, we started talking about epidemiological transitions, dual burden of diseases. Uh, so far, the health system was evolving in a manner uh, where the focus was more on providing primary health care services, focus was more on providing child health and reproductive health care services and therefore the investments uh, required on secondary or tertiary services uh, were lacking. But it was during this period that when we looked at the disease profile within the country, we saw that there was a transition happening within the country, an epidemiological transition happening within the country where the focus was uh, beginning to move towards non-communicable diseases. And so therefore, it required a shift in attention with regard to policy making as well. This round uh, marked a shift in attention from infectious diseases which were predominant in earlier decades to chronic diseases like diabetes, hypertension and heart diseases which were becoming more prevalent. And the 60th round also provided critical data on the rising burden of NCDs in both urban and rural areas. So it was not that the uh, rising uh, incidence of uh, chronic diseases with regard to NCDs was only an urban phenomenon, but it started being felt that the disease burden uh, with regard to NCDs was high among the rural population as well. So there was a lot of uh, footwork that started with regard to influencing public health strategies and resource allocation. Later on in the uh, late 2000s, the discussion about an urban uh, health mission also started taking place and around 2013-14 an urban health mission uh, took shape in most states of the country as well. So this period of the 1990s to the 2000s, the period of the last 30 years has been a period of uh, uh, rigorous and vigorous actions in the field of policy making uh, driven by data. The recent surveys were 2014 and 2017-18. We have not had a morbidity survey in India after 2017-18. 2014 was the 71st round and this round focused extensively on social consumption related to health. Uh, and it also highlighted the growing prevalence of NCDs and the economic burden of healthcare on households. And the 75th round, which was titled Social Consumption Health, uh, provided the most recent comprehensive morbidity data, and it was by far the uh, by far the survey which provided data on the largest sample uh, of uh, households as far as morbidity surveys are concerned. And uh, the uh, focus was on insurance coverage, the ongoing shift in disease patterns with a focus on the impact of public health programs. Now, with regard to health status of population, when we are looking at these data sources, there are a few key concepts that one needs to bear in mind. We have been hearing about mortality and morbidity. Now, uh, basically we know mortality refers to death and morbidity refers to sickness conditions or the general uh, feeling of being sick over a period of time or during a short period. So, uh, it is important that we understand what is the kind of data that we are looking for when we are looking into these databases. So, some of the key concepts that we need to bear in mind are as follows. Mortality basically uh, some of the uh, indicators that uh, refer to mortality are crude death rates, infant and child mortality, uh, case fatality or risk of dying from uh, certain diseases being very high. Morbidity as I mentioned is a condition of illness in a population, there may be low fatality existing in a population for a long period, but there is a general feeling of being sick and which of course impacts uh, work life productivity. Now with regard to morbidity, there are two important terms, incidence and prevalence. Incidence refers to the new cases 
of diseases and prevalence refers to the existing plus the new cases. So, prevalence of morbidity data, uh, the indicator prevalence of morbidity provides us a comprehensive view of morbidity status within a population and this is an indicator which is widely used or calculated at the state level and at the unit level, at the household level to provide us a household level scenario of what is the morbidity status. Uh, now, NSSO you must remember does not provide us district level data, but it provides us unit level data, household level data. So, there are certain NS, the data is provided at the NSS regions which are contiguous regions based upon various kinds of classifications, considerations. Uh, so, uh, it provides us state level data by different NSS regions at the state level. For some states where the uh, data is uh, very robust, there is a possibility of calculating district level data uh, for morbidity, but for some states where uh, the data is not very robust, it is not possible to calculate district level morbidity status. So, we have in an earlier discussion as I mentioned that uh, studied about disease burdens and we said that uh, the uh, national surveys provide information for global disease burden study. And uh, this is uh, what we referred to when we said that the national surveys provide data to uh, global disease burden study. So, prevalence of communicable diseases for example, gives us a sense of what is the extent of uh, prevalence of uh, tuberculosis, malaria, cholera, diarrhea. And if you can recall the national level profiles that we saw in the context of India in the global disease burden class, you will see that communicable diseases like uh, say diarrhea or tuberculosis still appears as some of the top 10 diseases in the context of India. So, therefore, these the data driven evidences that comes out at the national level or the state level or the unit level uh, informs a lot of policy making at the decentralized level. Uh, similarly, prevalence of non-communicable diseases gives us the extent of cancers, diabetes, cardiovascular diseases and multiple risk burdens. It also gives us if we are calculating the percentages of both communicable diseases and non-communicable diseases, it gives us a sense of the double burden of disease. And uh, the occurrence of diseases also increases the consequences of uh, various other kinds of diseases like impairment, disability or handicap. Now, there are fine differences between the term disease burden and disease prevalence and for more serious researchers in the field of health economics who want to work on disease profiles, you must uh, make sure to understand these distinctions because in the context of global disease burdens, we saw that we were calculating DALIs and calculation of DALIs or days of labor lost becomes a very important calculation when we are using the term global burden of disease. But prevalence of diseases basically refers to the extent of uh, new and existing diseases prevailing within a location. So, though related, they are not exactly the same and we should take care and caution with regard to when to use these concepts. Now, in the databases, when we are collecting morbidity data, we need to have some clarity about how is uh, morbidity uh, understood or assessed. And there is a lot of literature in the area of health economics with regard to types of morbidity. Now, there are many definitions of uh, morbidity. One of the most widely used definitions is by uh, Murray and Chen in the uh, area of health economics, where uh, it is defined as illness, disability, handicap and other compromised states of well-being, physical, social and mental. And all of these constitute critical dimensions of health and these attributes of sickness are termed as morbidity. And there are two fundamental types of morbidity measures which have been identified. One is self-perceived morbidity and the other is observed morbidity. So, what is self-perceived morbidity? These are measures that are perceived and reported by an individual usually in response to inquiries regarding illnesses. And the self-perceived morbidity depends upon an individual's perception of illness. So, the NSSO for example collects self perceived morbidity. So, the investigators go to the households and ask questions about uh, the illnesses that the uh, individuals are experiencing and without carrying out any clinical interventions, the information about the perception of the individual regarding whether they are feeling sick on the day of the survey 
or in the reference period for which the investigators are asking questions about uh, the NSSO collects information. So, most of the morbidity studies that we see in the area of socio-economic uh, studies by economists and sociologists and other social scientists making use of NSSO data are actually talking about self-perceived morbidity or self-reported morbidity. But observed morbidity is assessed through an independent observer employing specific methods that can be repeated with some degree of consistency and these are largely referred to as clinical morbidity measures. These are influenced by standards of abnormality as assessed by a trained observer. So, there is a debate with regard to whether self-reported morbidity is reliable or not. As researchers, we should focus on clinical studies and not on self-reported morbidity. But there is a literature that clarifies this distinction and uh, brings to the fore the argument that uh, often if an individual perceives himself or herself as being sick and his or her uh, condition of being sick hampers uh, their uh, work productivity, then it can be considered as a reason enough to note that person as feeling sick and facing morbid conditions. And uh, to that extent, uh, there will of course be a divergence between the estimates that come up from observed morbidity status and self-perceived morbidity status. And But while there are divergence, either of these are not less or more important. They have importance in the contexts in which the study is being undertaken. So, self-perceived morbidity or reported morbidity and observed morbidity are fundamentally different measures because they uh, measure different aspects of illnesses and diseases. Um, but they are the most common measures in the social context. The self-reported morbidity is the most common measure in the social context. And also in India, NSSO uses self-perceived morbidity as a morbidity measure. Now, there are certain basic definitions used in NSSO morbidity surveys that uh, can be useful uh, to the learner. Uh, so, for example, the definition, there are many definitions that are established and there are many definitional changes that have also occurred, but there are certain definitions that have remained more or less the same over a period of time. For example, ailment, which is an illness or an injury, uh, it is uh, meant as any deviation from the state of physical and mental well-being. So, when the investigators go to the field for collecting information, they are provided clarity about these concepts and uh, uh, these conceptual clarity then gives them the confidence to ask the question and then get the information and note this information in the questionnaires which is then used by researchers for analysis. Uh, with regard to chronic ailment, this basically refers to uh, if any member of a household was experiencing symptoms persisting for more than one month on the date of survey. If an individual feels that uh, she has been suffering from a certain problem uh, which has been persisting for more than one month and if that disease uh, appears in the list of diseases that have been considered uh, by the uh, NSSO, then that individual is uh, uh, noted as someone who is experiencing chronic ailment. So, these indicate any problem caused by ailment affecting any organ of the body. Uh, ailments of short duration, any ailment which is not of chronic nature that is persisting more than one month is defined as ailment of short duration. So, these kinds of uh, granular calculations with regard to short term illnesses, long term illnesses tell us about the status of health of population within a country and that also provides a lot of attention to what kind of healthcare services should be made available to people at the uh, ground level. There is also data on hospitalization, the distinction is made between admission as inpatient to a medical institution for treatment of some ailment or injury of a childbirth. So, hospitalization mostly refers to inpatient services and not just outpatient services. Prevalence of morbidity, uh, I we just made the distinction between prevalence and incidence. Uh, the prevalence of morbidity is estimated by the NSSO which is measured as the number of persons reporting ailment during the last 15 days per 1000 persons. Uh, the morbidity rate is then estimated as proportion of persons reporting ailment at any time during a 15 day reference period. 
then you can also calculate proportion of ailing persons which are based on self reported morbidity data and information on number of spells of different ailments during the reference period and is used to calculate morbidity. So, spells of ailment meaning that during a reference period how many times you have fallen sick with different different kinds of ailments. So, uh, we can talk about comorbidities in this context as well or we can talk about different kinds of ailments uh, within the reference period uh, and these becomes uh, you know, additional information with regard to how sick a person is or how many such persons have identified themselves as uh, facing multiple uh, spells of ailment during the reference period and that also requires a different kind of a policy focus. Reference period plays an important role in all surveys uh, and therefore, in NSSO surveys also. Reference period is basically the time period for which statistical results are collected or calculated and to which as uh, results these values refer to. So, if I am talking about a person uh, suffering from chronic illnesses, the reference period here is more than one uh, month or let us say the last 365 days. If the person responds as saying that I have been suffering from a certain disease for the last 365 days or more than one month and then I will be identifying that person as suffering from a chronic ailment. But if the person identifies uh, himself or herself as suffering from a disease only in the last 15 days, then it will be uh, considered as an acute ailment or a short term ailment. So, NSSO for short duration ailments reference period is during last 15 days and for chronic ailments it is more than one month and for hospitalization it is 365 days. Now, just to give you a sense of what are the kinds of questions that are asked in the NSSO health rounds, uh, the NSSO obtains information on morbidity based on the survey respondents answer yes or no uh, to the following questions. So, for example, have you been suffering from any chronic ailment? So, if the uh, investigator makes it very clear to the individual with regard to what is chronic ailment, generally uh, an individual is best aware about his or her own uh, health status. Uh, so, they are better able to answer these kinds of questions. Similarly, there are questions like have you been suffering from any other ailment any time during the last 15 days or have you been suffering from any other ailment on the day before the date of the survey. So, these are, these are the different reference periods. In the third question, you saw that the reference period is just one day or 24 hour recall. In the second question, the reference period is 15 days and in the third question, the reference period is more than a month. And these answers are based on self-reporting by the head of households or in some cases proxy reporting for other household members. So, for example, female member of the household who is also a mother may proxy report for her child. So, children's morbidity status are also known in these surveys by proxy reporting. Each person reporting an ailment whether chronic or acute is also asked to report the total duration of each of uh, case of ailment separately and the status of ailment is then noted. And based on the above information, the average duration of sickness per person is calculated. Uh, there is also a subsample of elderly population aged 60 and above and NSSO records overall health perception of the individual by explicitly asking them their own perception about the current status of their health, whether it is excellent, very good, good, fair or poor. So, there are different age segments for which data is available or collected. And as researchers, we can go into uh, not just national profiles as we saw in the case of disease burden study, global disease burden study, but using the NSSO data, we can actually create state profiles. We can go within the state and create NSS region level profiles for each state or uh, for different regions within the country. We can also carry out age specific morbidity profiles that will give us a more holistic understanding of health status of different sections of the population. Now, I have been referring to this term called unit level data. So, NSSO is one source which provides us unit level data which means that the household level data is available, survey based household level data is available. 
and there are various variables for which data is available. Some of the important ones that can be used for different kinds of study are household information which includes information about income, occupation, education level, household size and other demographic variables. There is individual level information for each members for example, age, gender and specific health conditions. We of course, have morbidity data there is healthcare utilization data whether the individual is visiting a public healthcare provider or a private healthcare provider, what is the nature of treatment received, the duration of hospitalization, there is data on uh, out of pocket expenditures incurred for treatment, inpatient services as outpatient services including doctor fees, medication costs and other related expenses. Uh, these days we also have information on whether the households or individuals have health insurance, the type of coverage and how it impacts health seeking behavior. So, with these kinds of information uh, you can get a sense that we can have a very rich analysis of uh, uh, state level and region level uh, data with regard to health status. So, uh, how to access the unit level data? NSSO's unit level data is generally released after the survey results are published and it is made available through the ministry website and the national data archive hosted by the ministry uh, which researchers and policy makers and institutions can access this data typically after registration or through specific requests. Now, the usage of unit level data is uh, huge. It is used by researchers to conduct in-depth analysis of health trends. Uh, policy makers utilize this data to identify gaps in healthcare access and to formulate policies. Economists and public health experts analyze healthcare spending, impact of health insurance and economic burden of diseases using this data. And these are just a few examples to uh, show you what is the uh, sample size of uh, the NSSO and why it is one of the most reliable data sources. Uh, I will focus on the 60th round, 71st round and the 75th round which are the more recent and more uh, robust and reliable rounds. 60th round provided data on economic impact of healthcare uh, focusing on NCDs, 71st round on social consumption related to health. Uh, 75th round provided a detailed unit level data on healthcare access and insurance coverage including morbidity. Now, if you look at the sample sizes, the 60th round uh, covered approximately uh, more than 73,000 households and detailed morbidity information was collected from 382,000 individuals. 71st round similarly covered about 65,000 uh, households more than 65,000 households and individual data for 333,000 uh, individuals. 75th round had 113,823 households and uh, the individual data was for 555,115 households. So, this by far was one of the most comprehensive data sets on health and morbidity in India that uh, helped us to um, sort of carry out various kinds of analysis uh, in various state contexts as well as in the context of India. Uh, so, so far we have looked at the NSSO morbidity surveys and we have seen some of the uh, rounds which have covered these morbidity surveys. Apart from NSSO, the uh, NFHS or the National Family Health Survey also provides us some morbidity data. Uh, but the focus of the NFHS is uh, different than the NSS. Uh, the NFHS primary focus is on providing uh, health and demographic indicators data and this is conducted by the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. The NSSO provides us morbidity data, but it is conducted under the aegis of Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation. So, therefore, the methodologies used, the definitions used are worked out within the larger context of what kind of official data is to be provided and there are various kinds of contestations and debates and detailing with regard to uh, the uh, statistical use of the data or the statistical robustness and reliability of the data. The NFHS also follows uh, various uh, uh, detailed uh, statistical robustness tests with regard to the data that is collected, but the focus is on providing district level uh, demographic and health uh, outcome indicators data. 
Uh, so, this survey is carried out uh, conducted by the Ministry of uh, Health and Family Welfare with technical assistance from the International Institute of Population Sciences. Now, what are the type of morbidity data collected by the NFHS? There is a focus on specific morbidities. The NFHS collects data on prevalence of certain diseases and health conditions, particularly those related to reproductive health, child health and non-communicable diseases. It also covers data on self-reported morbidity for specific conditions such as diabetes, hypertension and asthma. So, people who are working on women's uh, health also working on the gender dimensions of health with regard to uh, child health, also men and women. It is advisable to correlate the morbidity data available from the NFHS to also uh, carry out analysis on health status of population of the country. But uh, understand that these data are uh, collected and made available keeping in mind the focus area of providing comprehensive information about women and children uh, with focus on reproductive health in India. There is also self-reported morbidity uh, estimates from the NFHS that can be carried out. The NFHS include questions about whether respondents have been diagnosed with particular conditions such as diabetes, high blood pressure, asthma, tuberculosis or cancer and this provides an estimate of the prevalence of these conditions within the population. It also captures information on treatment and management of these conditions including medication use and access to healthcare services. Like the NSSO, NFHS also provides us district level information on whether patients are moving towards more of government healthcare services or private healthcare services and it gives us a sense of the scale of privatization of basic and primary healthcare services, amount of money that people are spending in government healthcare services versus private healthcare services. So, as economy Economists, it helps us to analyze the uh, overall uh, economic burden that is on the households for accessing even primary healthcare services or basic healthcare services. Uh, as I said, the focus is on maternal and child health. So, there is a lot of data on morbidity related to maternal and child health, including complications during pregnancy and childbirth, childhood illnesses such as diarrhea and respiratory infections, and the treatment received for these conditions. With regard to infectious diseases, because there are a lot of childhood and maternal diseases that are related to infectious diseases, we have data on prevalence and treatment of certain infectious diseases such as tuberculosis, malaria and sexually transmitted infections in the NFHS. Uh, there is a lot of nutritional status and related morbidity data like anemia, uh, which is closely related to morbidity especially among women and children. So, when we are looking uh, morbidity data in the context of the state level or at the national level, it is not just important to look at various open diseases, but it is also important to look at inherent diseases such as anemia, which uh, is one of the important leading causes of maternal and child deaths in India as one of the policy uh, focus areas. Now, how does the NFHS morbidity data differ from NSSO? NFHS provides valuable morbidity data, but it differs in its scope and detail because NFHS focuses more on health outcomes related to family welfare, reproductive health and nutrition with some data on specific chronic uh, conditions. So, the scope of uh, the NFHS is uh, slightly limited compared to NSSO because NSSO uh, does not just focus on maternal and child health, the focus is on overall health conditions of the population. The NFHS, while it provides a lot of comprehensive information about morbidity status, the framework within which the data is collected is maternal and child health services. So, NSSO morbidity surveys offer a broader and more detailed view of general morbidity, healthcare utilization and economic burden of diseases across the population. I think it is useful to look at some of the recent rounds and usage of NFHS. The NFHS 4 of 2015-16 and NFHS 5 2019-21 are some of the most recent and widely used data sets and they include uh, morbidity data. NFHS 5 have expanded the range of health conditions covered and provides more granular data at the district level. Uh, the morbidity data from NFHS is widely used by public health professionals, researchers and policy makers to assess the health status of population, monitor trends over time and design interventions. Now, you can using the uh, NFHS uh, data set create district level profile about uh, morbidity. 
The NSSO does not have the scope to provide district level data for all the states, although some attempt can be made for some states where the data is very robust, but it provides us region level data, which is a different kind of a formation by the NSSO itself. But the NFHS provides us district level data, so you can create district level profiles depending upon the disease that you want to study. So, some of the steps that you have to go through for being able to create these district level profiles are as follows. You first obtain the district level data sets from the NFHS 5 survey, let us say. These data are available through the International Institute for Population Sciences or other authorized sources. You go to the website and you find this data. You request access and you may need to fulfill certain criteria of filling up forms and registration to obtain the data. And then you identify the morbidity related indicators that you want to include in the district profiles. Some of the common indicators that you may want to include are let us say uh, prevalence of specific conditions such as diabetes, hypertension or incidence of infectious diseases like malaria or STIs, uh, self-reported chronic illnesses or maternal health complications or child morbidity example diarrhea and acute respiratory infections. So then you extract the data and clean the data. You extract the relevant morbidity data for each district from the NFHS data sets. You clean the data to handle any missing values or inconsistencies and then you aggregate the morbidity data to create summaries at the district level. These days we also have district fact sheets which provides us uh, more or less important information at the district level. But if you want to have your own profiles created by correlating various other uh, aspects with uh, diseases, you can do that by looking at the unit level data. Uh, then you might also involve calculating uh, prevalence rates, treatment coverage or other relevant statistics for each condition of your interest and then you can compile the aggregated data into a profile format for each district. So, a typical district health profile might include basic demographic data, prevalence and incidence rates of selected diseases or health conditions, information on healthcare utilization including percentage of people receiving treatment for specific conditions. Then you have data on related health outcomes such as mortality rates or nutritional status and then you can compare the district data with state or national averages to highlight the areas of concern or progress. Sample sizes, NFHS also has a fairly large sample size for researchers to take it uh, seriously and, uh, pro and it provides consistency of data comparisons. So, for example, in NFHS 5 2019-20, approximately 636,699 households were surveyed across India of which the number of women aged 15 to 49 that were interviewed were more than 724,000 and the number of men interviewed between the age group of 15 to 54 was more than 101,000. So, as you can see the focus is more on women uh, questionnaire or the data on women, but you have data on men as well in the reproductive age group which, when, which can give you a lot of information with regard to data comparisons. For morbidity measures, specifically chronic diseases data is available because the survey collects data from both men and women on whether they have been diagnosed with chronic uh, diseases such as uh, diabetes, hypertension and heart disease and others. Sample size for specific indicators, for example, questions on diabetes and hypertension typically apply to all respondents in the age group of 15 to 49 for women and 15 to 54 for men. The NFHS 4 similarly had data on more than 601,000 households and uh, women interviewed were more than 699,000 and men interviewed in the age group of 15 to 54 was more than 112,000. We also have information on um, uh, childhood morbidity uh, because childhood illnesses are uh, important data source data that are collected in the uh, NFHS. You can also create profiles for children under the age of 5 with relevant sample size reflecting the number of such households. Now, finally, I want to focus on uh, the IHDS survey which is the India Human Development Survey which uh, in terms of scope and coverage is different than the NSSO and NFHS also. Uh, so, this is another source of important information on morbidity in India. And uh, so far we have uh, two data points available for 2004-05 and 2011-12 
uh, and it is promised that the new data on IHDS will also be made available very soon. It is conducted by the National Council of Applied Economic Research in collaboration with University of Maryland, USA. The first round referred to as IHDS-1 in literature was conducted in 2004-05 covering approximately 41,000 households across all states and union territories of India. And in the second round which was conducted in 11-12, uh, most households were re-interviewed, uh, most households that were covered in the first round were re-interviewed. So, this uh, survey actually allows us for longitudinal analysis and tracking of changes over time because the same households have been revisited in the second data point which is a unique exercise. These kinds of exercises are not carried out by the official data sources. IHTS is not official data source. It is uh, not carried out by ministry. It does not have a rigorous sampling method uh, with regard to uh, coverage of uh, uh, all districts uh, and with uh, perfect representation at the all India level. However, the sample size of IHTS is also representative enough to give us an overall uh, information about uh, the uh, at the national level. So, this data source also gives us self-reported morbidity data. Uh, typically, whether individuals within the households have suffered from a any illness or injury in the specified reference period, typically the last 30 days like the NSSO, it includes both acute and chronic conditions. The survey also asks respondents to report type of illness, injury or health condition which allows for the collection of data on wide range of diseases. We also have data on healthcare utilization uh, because whether they are going to public and private facilities, type of treatment. Uh, whether individuals are hospitalized, duration of uh, hospitalization. We have rich information on out of pocket expenditures on health care and hospital stays. Um, uh, similarly, for chronic conditions and maternal and child health as well. Now, what is the official status of NSSO, NFHS and IHTS? As I said, the data collected by NSSO and NFHS are official statistics but data collected by IHTS is not official statistics. However, it is highly respected and widely used survey that provides valuable data on various aspects of human development in India. Now, let me end this lesson by also focusing a little on some of the other morbidity surveys that are uh, carried out in India and the data for which is also available to researchers and can be used in different contexts. So, we had the annual health survey which continued between 2007 and 12. It has been discontinued now, but its data from earlier years are still useful for historical analysis. This was conducted by the Registrar General of India and the uh, focus was on health and demographic data including morbidity and mortality. The coverage was primarily on empowered action group states and Assam and it provided data on health outcomes including morbidity for various diseases. So, much of this data is available online and uh, those who are working on EAG states and Assam can actually look at the data between 7 and 12. We also have sample registration system data where the focus is primarily on vital statistics including mortality. Uh, but also some data on morbidity, it is conducted by the Registrar General of India and the coverage uh, provides estimates of birth and death rates along with causes of death which indirectly gives insights into morbidity patterns. Then there is National NCD Monitoring Survey or the NNMS, the focus is on NCDs and associated risk factors. It is conducted by the Indian Council of Medical Research and National Center for Disease Informatics and Research in, with support from the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. The coverage provides detailed data on prevalence of NCDs like diabetes, hypertension, risk factors that contribute to morbidity statistics. We also have integrated disease surveillance program in India, the IDSP, which according to me is one of the finest contributions to uh, statistical uh, data collection at the ground level with regard to diseases in India. The focus is on surveillance of communicable diseases, providing real time data on morbidity from various infectious diseases. The information about epidemics, pandemics and disease outbreaks that we get is mostly uh, collected uh, from the ground level on a daily basis and on a real time basis uh, from the uh, IDSP or the Integrated Disease Surveillance Program. Many researchers working in the area of health economics are also not aware about these kinds of uh, 
data uh, taking uh, at the ground level. Uh, this is conducted by the National Center for Disease Control under the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare and the aim is to detect and respond to disease outbreaks providing morbidity data on a weekly basis and sometimes on a daily basis. Now this information given the sensitivity of the information is not available to public at large. However, uh, researchers who want to work on uh, new data, new uh, diseases emerging can go through certain permissions uh, at the state level and get information as required from the IDSP. There is also the longitudinal aging study in India, the LASI study where the focus is on uh, the elderly population uh, which also provides us morbidity status of the elderly population. This is the survey is conducted by the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare in collaboration with IIPS and other institutions and it provides various detailed data on health conditions, chronic diseases and disabilities among older adults. There are various other state specific surveys that are also carried out on morbidity which I have not included in this lesson. There are many independent surveys on morbidity that are also uh, funded by the state directorate of economics and statistics in various state governments and these data is available with the uh, state directorates that researchers can make use of. Uh, so, there is ample data for researchers to work on uh, health status of population. It all depends upon where you begin your study and what is the context that you want to study and what efforts you are putting into actually extracting these data sets and looking closely at these data and doing the right kinds of correlations and coming up with interesting profiles. So, each of these sources uh, has its own focus, they have their own methodology and coverage. So, and they allow researchers and policy makers to gain a comprehensive understanding of health issues across the country. And as I said, accessing some of these data might require going through uh, permissions. So, what we have done in today's class is to um, give an exposure to what are the different sources of uh, morbidity data and mortality data in India. We discussed three important sources of which two are official statistics, the NSSO morbidity surveys uh, for which data is available from the 1950s onwards. But of course, there are issues of comparability of 1950s and 1970s survey or the 1980s survey with that of the 2000s. Some of the most uh, recent surveys that have been conducted in the 2000s are widely in use and it provides very comprehensive information not just on morbidity coverage but also on out of pocket expenditure done by the households on insurance coverage, on utilization of healthcare services. It can give us a peek into uh, how much of privatization has happened with regard to accessing healthcare services in the rural areas and the urban areas. Similarly, the NFHS provides us uh, specific morbidities data with focus on maternal and child health. So, researchers can actually focus on uh, some of the important aspects of morbidity that the NFHS data provides. NFHS also allows us to work on unit level data at the household level. It is a rich source of information for district level data as well. There are comparability issues between the NSSO and NFHS, but there are research studies that have been successful in combining some information from the NSSO and NFHS for more analysis. Uh, we have IHDS which is not official statistics but has sample size big enough for us to use the data which provides us a lot of robust analysis with regard to human development aspects including education and health. And then there are other surveys also that we just briefly touched upon which uh, can also be accessed by researchers uh, to come up with uh, analysis on morbidity surveys. So, for this lesson, I have visited the websites of the Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation, the National Data Archives, uh, National Family Health Survey, the IHDS website and the um, website that provides us information on the NCD survey. So, these links are provided on the uh, reference slide. Uh, once it is shared with you on the portal, you can go through these links to download some of the data and practice on uh, some of these data sets. I have also referred to a thesis uh, by Nayanaki Sharma uh, titled Prevalence of Morbidity and Disease Specific Morbidities in Assam. It is an unpublished thesis submitted to IIT Guwahati carried under my supervision and I have extensively utilized the resources that we worked on for the thesis for uh, this lesson. 
I have also used the literature by Murray and Chen, Understanding Morbidity Change, which appeared in the Population and Development Review. Uh, there is a research paper by Nayanaki Sharma and myself on the status of morbidity and prevalence of disease specific morbidity in Assam based on NSS 75th round, which is a technical paper that appeared in the Sarvekshan or the Journal of National Statistical Office and it is available uh, online and I have utilized some of the information from this paper as well for preparation of uh, this lecture. I hope this is useful to the learners and those who want to get introduced to uh, data on uh, morbidity for uh, research purposes, I hope will find this lesson particularly useful. Thank you, see you in the next class.